All right, so I hope those clips were really helpful for you to get an idea about this BCS 853 uh, two-wheel tractor. Um, I'm gonna give you a quick walk behind of this, the setup that we have here with the Britanti flail mower, and then even specifically talking about where we got this particular BCS tractor from um, and the service provider that we chose to work with and why. So again, this is the, the 853 model. Some of the key components that we like about this, there's a few special things and I'll go over some of those. The very first thing, when you get this thing out of the box, you're gonna notice that this thing comes with the handlebars really low and they're actually flipped to the other side and I'll explain that. So regardless of your height, this will work for you as you can see, even if you're super short. So with this nice little mechanism here, you just push this lever down and you get it to a comfortable standing height that works for you. I'm about six, two and a half, six, three ish. So I'd put it here and the idea is that once you have this operating, you wanna be able to push down on this, okay? And you can see how easy this is. I'm not putting a lot of effort into this. You could do this one handed. Um, this, I'm, I'm probably putting 30 pounds of pressure on this, if that, it's, it's really not much. Um, so you, that's the only reason you need to really push it down is to be able to kind of maneuver, which takes me to the next thing. You see how easy this spins here. Both tires are spinning and it'll turn on a dime. Now this also has a lever here on this right side and this lever here, activating the clutch, pulling this back. This is your differentials. So if I tried to shift now, well, if I was in gear, this, this would lock both of these wheels up to get them to give you more traction. Now, speaking of the wheels, one of the cool components of this is, you can see there's a bolt pattern on these wheels here. So they make spacer kits for these, depending on the attachment setup that you're using, whether or not you need just a little more of a footprint. Now, these are set on the most narrow width. Uh, they, you can flip this particular rim around to have a further, to have an outside mount. Now, the measurements, I don't remember exactly. This is pretty much the, the setup that I'll be using probably 95% of the time with what we're doing for our market gardening. Now, the other neat thing with these handlebars, if you'll notice here, there's a couple of little clips and attachments and they're, they're on either side. And if you just flip this up and pop this out, say just carefully and we'll set this down. I'm gonna do the same thing on that other side there and set this down. Now, these handlebars, including when you're working the, the attachments, you can walk this handlebar out and it'll lock in place just like so while those handlebars are attached. That way, when you're walking, you see some brush, you just jump to the side pretty quick and you can keep walking, operating this by one hand. Um, when you need to operate a different type of attachment, like, um, oh goodness, there's, there's a variety of attachments. I'll throw some up on the screen here. But if you're gonna be operating something that's rear mounted versus front mount, well, to get rear mount, the PTO is only on one side. So to be able to accomplish that, the, the rear mount versus front mount, you would have to flip this around. Now this is rear mount. This would be more so for like a tiller. Then the, these mechanisms here just get flipped right back around for your, for your uh, PTO, um, PTO activation here, as well as uh, your gear shifting on this side. So you can see it's, it's a pretty, pretty simple process. Now, I'm gonna swing this back around and I'll show you uh, how the gear shifts work. Pretty simple. Um, this is clutch driven. So you would need to have a little bit of understanding on how to work a clutch so you can get the concept. It is a super simple clutch to work as on most uh, most machines, the clutch is here on the left-hand side. So we have the emergency stop that must be depressed at all times. Clutch comes in, we'll come down here to the key. Um, I chose the electric start, does also still have the pull start. Choke there, choke on, crank this bad boy up. Once you get this running, you can see here with your different gear shifts. And if you look down here, at the, I'll just call it the gearbox, if you will. You can see, I'll shift these in, and you can see how these move. First, neutral, second, neutral, third, neutral, and fourth. So there's four gears that are marked here. I can tell you this, the max speed on this is roughly about nine miles per hour. In first gear, you're at a very comfortable walk. And if you noticed in the video, you can see pretty significantly a difference between a speed one and somebody walking versus a speed two because when you're at speed two it works better for having a little more force 
to be able to push down large saplings at about two inches in diameter. Uh, but if you're at the first speed, you're probably not gonna have enough force to be able to push those over. However, you're gonna get better ground up material, so it depends on what you're doing. If you're in second speed, the second gear, you'll notice in the video, it'll whip you around when you're trying to make your turn. So you have to be ready. I mean, understand, obviously, you're on the tail end of something that's spinning around the center, so you're gonna get whipped pretty quick. So you just have to use your use common sense in that when you're working the equipment. Um, probably turn down your speeds depending on what you're working in, okay? Now, the other portion that I'll show you about up here um, on the handlebar is uh, it has braking system right and left side that will help you when you're turning when the shift differential is off. So when this is off, these brakes will help you to turn right. You pull the right, so it helps pin that right tire a little bit. Turn left, pin the left tire a little bit. Helps you get those, uh, those sharper turns if you need to. If you're able to just muscle it around, you can literally just take this and swing it. Um, sometimes if you're on a bit of a slope, it puts a little bit of pressure to make it a little difficult. This here, depending on the way the handlebars are, determines if you're in drive or if we're going in reverse. And oddly enough, even though where this bar is, um, this is my most used position for the 853 BCS tractor. I actually have it in the back position for drive. You would think that drive forward. However, that's not the case for this. This is how you go forward. This is how you go backwards. Um, when you're flipped the other way, this will be in that position here. You flip the handlebars, it's going forward. Technically, it's going this direction um, with this here coming towards me. Now, I'll talk about this Bertanti flail mower that's here at the attachment. Now, you can see that uh, this is a typical PTO shaft. It's super simple to connect. One person can do it. It takes a little bit of finagle. It's not just going to slide right in. Uh, you just have to wiggle a little bit, but it'll get in there. Now, this Britanti flail mower, uh, different brand, of course, but I liked having this set up compared to uh, the other brands uh, for a few reasons. And, and, you know, those opinions are going to be different for everybody else. So I'm not even going to give you my reasoning, but I'll tell you what I do like and don't like about the model that I have. And in, before we do that, I'll let you see what's underneath this here. So if you take a quick look underneath this in the flail mower, you can kind of see what we're dealing with. You can see I just picked this up with one hand, but this is what a flail mower looks like. And these teeth, they spin around um, on the cylinder as well as individual blades. And these can actually be flipped around as we've done once and flipped to the other side so you get dual-sided use. Then you can resharpen them and have some uh, backups. So that spins around and ultimately mulches up all the material. Um, and again, you can see that if you look, one-handed can pick this up, pretty simple. It, it's, it's not heavy at all. Now, if you notice here on the front, there's a couple, there's looks like something's missing. Looks like something's missing here. Well, that's because something is missing. So what this had on it was a, a bar attachment that flips up and rests here. It's attached here and it swings forward and has two casters on the front that help guide this as you're just traveling along. Um, and you can see on this side, there's a sled here. We're missing one sled that we ended up finding in debris, but these types of pins that are here, when they get snagged up in some of the brush that you're working with, they tend to just get caught and just get hit just right and pull those bad boys out. Um, that's what happened on the top here. So we lost this one. And if this is not in its driving mode, meaning down, which hinders you when you're working in brush, if it's not down, and locked in, then it has to be up, but it's not locked anywhere, meaning it will just get pulled. And that is what happened is that thing kept getting pulled in the brush. Some of the, uh, the, the handles got a little twisted. So I just took it off this morning, just so it's not in the way at all any further um, and, and starting to vibrate around. Now this Bertanti flail mower, you can see on this side here, this is gear driven. Uh, there's no belts in this. Um, that's what this guard is for. And this bad boy is super powerful. You can see here all this material that's on the, on the ground. This is what you saw in the video that we had just everywhere in the forest floor here, all over the place. And, and it just grounded up. You can see we'd have some sticks and branches stuff still intact like so. This is all single pass that I've done in this area. Um, so depending on how fine you need things ground up, two passes on this system would probably work your wonders. So I think that pretty much covers it. It's the 853. I do want to touch on where we did get this from. Uh, throw their information at the top of the screen for you. It's from Daly's Farm and Walk Behind Tractors. They're based out of Hohenwald, Tennessee. Uh, there's a couple other BCS tractor providers, but none that I have seen offer you attachments that work with this. 
that are not branded by BCS. I hope you enjoyed this review on the BCS 853 tractor with Batanti flail mower. Feel free to ask any questions in the comment section below. Remember, every day is an opportunity to learn something new and to spread a little love. So from our family to yours, keep nurturing your passions, cherish your loved ones, and of course, stay rooted in love. Until next time, stay blessed and happy farming. We'll see you on the next video. Mm -hmm.